Well, good afternoon all. Welcome to the Off Grid Homestead where we are doing another battery capacity test on this battery after I've balanced the cells. So let's have a look to see where we're at with our testing. So we have a look on the case. The last capacity test we did, I got 86 amp hours out of 100 amp hour battery and our BMS shut off at 48.7 volts, which is way too high because the cells are in balance. So what I've been doing for those that haven't seen the other videos, I've been manually balancing the individual cells with my bench top power supply and bringing those cells down back up. Now they're not perfect because it's taken three days to do it and I can't get it absolutely perfect but I've certainly brought them up so I want to do another discharge test which we're doing and see where we're at. So, so far in our test we've got 85.5 amp hours come out and our battery voltage has dropped to 49.9 so just under 50 volts. So we're getting close to the capacity we got on our last test. So let's see if we've improved the capacity. A few moments later. Righto, so we have just shut down and I think it was like about 45 volts on the BMS. So, mm, a little bit better, but still not that flash. Okay, so what I'll do is I will reboot uh, the BMS up and we'll have a reading, we'll get the final results on that and then we'll do a volt test across these cells. Okay, so we're going to wake up the BMS using the Victron controller. So Victron controllers will wake up a BMS. So I'm just going to give that a little bit of a touch there. We can see... No, come on. Give it a little bit of a touch there. So we can see we just got under 90 amp hour, 89.7 amp hour, and the BMS shut off at 46.8 volts. So a little bit better, but not that good. So what I've done is I've just gone and tested the cell voltages for each cell now that the BMS had shut itself off. Now I've written them down because I can't physically show you them while I'm doing the test because I need two hands. There's our voltages. So our lower cell is 2.59 volts and our higher cell is uh, one of these ones here, 3.05 I think. So 3.07 is our highest cell voltage. So what I could do now is I could potentially get those cells that are high and we drain some power out of them and bring them down to about 2.55 volts. But it is a 42 degree Celsius day today. And in this shed here, you can see it's the big shed and it is hot in here and I don't want to be in here all day doing it. I do have my little evaporative going, which is great for when I'm sitting in front of it, but it's not gonna cool this shed especially when the opening is as big as it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the solar controller back onto it and get those charged up again, uh, up again because I don't like those cells sitting at their minimum voltage. And then I can have a look at what I do from there. Now, here's an interesting fact. One of my subscribers commented in the comment section saying that when they had fa uh, cells fail, when they had batteries fail, it was always the cell that was on the positive terminal going out of the battery. And we noticed that the lowest cell voltage is the positive terminal on this battery. So, interesting, I'm kind of finding the same things. So now what I need to do is get myself an active balancer. I think it's the five amp active balancer, which I will do. Now I just want to explain an important point here. So I've been charging that battery up at 56 volts, which is 3.5 volts per cell. Now there are some people that believe that that will not charge the battery properly and you need to go right up a lot higher in voltage. Now the reason why I've got the 3.5 volts per cell is right here. Let me show you. 
So here's one of Andy's off-grid garage videos that I've just paused on. So he's done some test charging at 3.5 volts per cell and 3.4 volts per cell with his high-end tester to see the capacities. Now at 3.4 volts per cell with some absorption, he actually got 98% back into his batteries. And at 3.5 volts per cell with absorption, he got 99.7, nearly 100% back into his batteries. Now I've been charging my batteries at 56 volts, which is 3.5 volts per cell, and I've had an absorption time of about two hours, which is quite a long time. I wouldn't normally have it that long, but for this testing, that's the time I've had. So those batteries have had plenty of opportunity to be able to reach up to their full capacity to what those cells are at three and a half years old cells. So that's where I'm getting my figures. Now there are some people in the comments that believe that I should be charging higher in the voltage range. I'm not dismissing that, I'm just trying this first and we'll see how we go because we've got some good evidence there on Andy's testing that you can actually charge at that voltage. The question is for my BMS in those batteries, is that voltage high enough to activate the balancing? I kind of think it is, but I don't know. Now, I've sent an email to the battery company with my problem, so I'm going to wait for when they get back after the Christmas holidays to respond for that with that, and then we'll go through with the battery company and do some diagnostics through what they suggest. So that's where we're at with this battery. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Comment below, usual thing. We'll see you in the next video.